Welcome to our second chapter discussion on breaking free from emotional eating by Janine Roth. So here's our book that we are studying through. We are in chapter two. It is called Deciding What You Want to Eat, Having Your Cake and Eating It Too. So this goes, I've got my um, worksheets here. I have filled them out and am currently filling them out. So this is guideline number four. Um, this particular book that Janine Roth is doing that we're working through does not do the guidelines, the eating guidelines in order because that's not her basis of this book, of this particular book. But I did put this here because I like them and I think it's interesting to know. So this is actually guideline number four, which is eat what you want. Now, I'm going to preface this one by saying you really need to get to the core of this topic of eating what you want because this is not a free for all. This is not your license to binge. This is not that concept. This you really have to learn that the eating guideline number one, last chapter, which was eat when you are hungry, follows, this one follows that one. So once you've determined you are hungry, now it is time to eat what you're wanting to eat, okay? So um, first question is, do you ever allow yourself to eat what you truly want? Why or why not? And um, so let's go ahead and dive into the book and then I'll give you my answer on that one. Um, so she discusses in here about um, when she would eat stuff that she knew that other people really wouldn't want to see her eating. She would try to hide it and, um, you know, just have kind of that secrecy about food, which is not a good habit to have or way to live. Um, so she tells this story about when she was developing these guidelines that she developed this one, which was eat what you want. And she gives the rationale behind this as we get into the into the chapter. So she wanted chocolate chip cookie dough. So she, and this was at the point she decided she was done dieting and she needed to find a way to live life um, with food freedom. So she decided I'm done dieting. Um, I'm, this is one of my things, eat what I want. And so she went through like a chocolate chip cookie dough phase and in the chapter she discusses it. So she did this for a couple of months and she did gain 15 pounds in the first little bit. Then as she kind of worked through her food, her wanting of food, she went, to, she realized that when she would ask herself, well, what do I want? It would be something like chicken and vegetables or quinoa or rice, you know? So um, then, so the, the couple months after that, she started stabilizing in her weight and then she actually was able to lose weight um, towards the end of her working through these guidelines. Um, one of the reasons, this is page 19, one of the reasons it, it's terrifying for compulsive eaters to believe we can eat what we want and not become obese is that we think we want so much. We think we still want what we weren't allowed as children, as teenagers, and young adults. So a lot of this when we hear eat what you want, it becomes a, a free-for-all mentality because we're thinking of all these things that we, we deprived ourselves of that we didn't have before and so we're just wanting to eat all of those kinds of things. Um, she tells a funny story about uh, wanting a hostess snowball and this was something that was really special as a child that um, she really wanted and as an adult she never let her have this food because it just wasn't healthy. And um, so she finally had it and realized she didn't even like the taste of it. It wasn't what she thought it was. Um, it was more just the memory of it. Back to question one, um, do you ever allow yourself to eat what you truly want? Why or why not? Generally, I don't. And I wrote not under a, um, not under a controlled method. Like I feel like I always have a controlled method of eating what I want. Um, I don't normally do this because I feel like if I did, I'd never eat healthy again. Um, now, that is my mentality, my maybe older mentality. Uh, it is not my current one that I have been able to work on. Many times, more often than not, now that I have been living her guidelines for quite some time, um, I am able to ask myself, what do I want to eat? And I do choose 
probably 97% of the time, I do choose food that makes me and my body feel good. So, but that is my fear of, of this topic of eat what you want. Um, so what are some, this is question two on your worksheet. What are some things you can do to learn how to trust your body's natural wisdom in regards to foods you crave when you are hungry? And the key word in there is when you are hungry. So um, I wrote down a couple of ways that I have been learning how to um, trust my body's natural wisdom in this. And so um, I have written, um, when I make and have victories, um, it can, it inspires me to continue to have those victories. So I'll write about it. I'll share it. I'll remember, um, how great it feels to make those good choices. Um, I sit and feel the hunger and see what I really want. So I had actually done this the other day. I had a doctor's appointment. It had been a rough day. Um, my daughter was super fussy. I had a doctor's appointment. Of course, they were late. I was. It was like they didn't even see me an hour till an hour after my appointment. I thought I was gonna have this nice day to have just a little bit of chill time at home to work on some projects I needed to do and just to kind of decompress a little bit. Um, my my daughter is three. I'm not sure if everyone knows that, but my daughter is three, and um, so. I had this plan that I was going to come home and I was going to make this wonderful, healthy breakfast with um, a healthy pancake and just sit outside, enjoy it. Um, eating any meals alone is like a rarity. So um, it didn't work out that way. I had like 25 minutes and then I needed to go pick her up from school. So I came home on the drive home. I, and, oh, and I had been fasting because I had to get blood work done. So I, um, and the appointment was at 1030. They didn't see me till 1130 and I didn't get out of there until almost like it was a little after 12 by the time I got out of there. So I was hungry. I had brought in some dehydrated apples that I had made in my dehydrator and I ate those on the way home. There's probably 15 of them. And, um, as I'm driving and eating these, I'm thinking, well, what do I want to have at home? Cause clearly I don't have time to like do this really fun cooking thing, try this new recipe and sit down outside and enjoy it. And I really didn't have anything I wanted to eat. I kept thinking, well, I am hungry. What do I want? Nothing really, really came to me. And then I was like, you know what I want? I want a banana, an apple, and I want my natural peanut butter. And that's what I ate for that meal for, it was basically lunch. Um, and that's what I ate and I felt good. I felt satisfied and I felt super happy that I made a good decision. And so by making these good decisions, it's fueling me to continue to do that more often. Um, and then the next one, uh, research, I let, I love research. Um, so I want to research what my body wants when I am wanting certain items. Like when I'm feeling like, oh, I just want chocolate. Well, maybe there's a deficiency. I believe, um, magnesium a lot of times is what they say. If you're craving chocolate, um, it's magnesium. All right. So a balance exists between not depriving yourself of the food you want when you are hungry and using food to make up all the other ways you feel deprived. And this again is a, a core to, or a, a fundamental important thing for you to like just get because food does not relieve or change deprivation that we feel in other areas of our lives. So um, the next uh, question, question three, are what are some other areas of your life that you feel lacking or deprived? And um, you can list out the other areas of your life. I wrote some um, in there just uh, in my relationships. Um, I'm currently having some issues in my marriage and we're working through it. Um, my feelings of it seems like everybody else has it so easy and I just it's like it just never seems great with mine um finances always seem to be a place of lacking or just you know whatever um and so those are like some that I wrote so um we try to fill these voids in relationships and issues with our marriage um difficulties I'm having currently with parenting um we try to fill those issues, those deprivations with food. Food is not going to 
fix parenting issues or relationships or finances. That's just the bottom line of that. All right, so bottom of page 20, it says, eating what you want gets translated to eating whenever you want, regardless of your hunger. And it is not long before the eating gets out of control and you fulfill your own prophecy. You can't eat what you want because when you do, you gain weight. So, like I said, you've got to really hear the core of this, that you're you are basing what you want to eat on your hunger, not on your head hunger or your cravings. Like, um, not well, not even cravings. You're not basing this as a free for all, I can eat whatever I want and be thin because the true bottom line is you can't do that. You can't do that. All right, so um, trust develops and builds when you are given a choice and not as in dieting or denying it. When you choose to make yourself comfortable, not miserable, to take care of yourself rather than hurt yourself. So I put, and this is a little quote on your worksheet, um, and I put that equals your lifestyle change, which is truly what we need in order to have food freedom. And it also is a mindset shift. And you really have to do this in order to have um, long lasting, lifelong changes. These changes have to be a lifestyle. Now, is it going to be 100% perfect forever? No, we're human. We make mistakes. It's going to happen. So a couple of things that you want to ask before, once you've determined you're hungry. Um, this is on page 22. When you decide to eat and then decide what you will eat, the first question is to ask yourself, where is this desire to eat coming from? The second question is, where is the desire for this particular food coming from? If the answer to the first is that you are hungry, you might now examine the steps you can take in choosing to eat a particular food at that particular time. Remember in chapter one, we talked about when you're eating when you're hungry, you are able to have satisfaction in that food and you know you're gonna eat again in a couple of hours when you truly get hungry again. So some of these points, um, this next point kind of goes along with that. Okay, so she says, um, forget about the calories. Um, do you want the hard boiled egg? Because if you don't want it and you eat it, you won't be satisfied. Chances are you'll go grazing for more food, which means you'll essentially end up eating probably more calories than you were wanting in the first place. So question four on your sheet says, have you seen that when you eat something because it has fewer calories or points, but you really don't want it, that you end up eating more calories because you graze? Do you think you would have eaten less if you would have eaten what you wanted in the first place? Now again, this is not a, a foolproof scenario. Okay? Um, I said yes, sometimes. I definitely feel more satisfied and I feel like I taste the food more when um, when it is the food that I actually want. So the other day, um, my husband was super sweet and I was having a rough day, so he bought me my drug of choice, which is peanut M&Ms. And I was really getting back into you know cleaning up my eating and not cleaning it up in a legalistic way, but cleaning it up because I was, I've just not been feeling super productive. I've not been productive. I've not been getting a lot of things done. Um, I'm just feeling really tired. Like if I could just sleep all day, that would be fabulous. Um, and so he bought me these M&Ms, which was super sweet. And I was like, oh, I didn't really want them, but I did want them. So I said, give me three, just give me three and put the bag away. So he gave me three and I would put one in and I would suck on it and I'd get the, the coating off of it. And then I would really just take my time enjoying the, the chocolate. And then I'd get to the peanut and I'd really chew it up and enjoy it. And I, I was okay with just three M&Ms and not the whole bag. And um, so by eating something that I actually wanted, I felt like I tasted it more, I appreciated it more. I actually tried to um, make the experience longer. So it was like I ate one and then I waited a little bit and then I ate another one um, until I got to my three. 
So I don't know. What do you? What are your thoughts on that? How do you feel about that? She talks about at no point was uh, she in touch with what she wanted to eat, but only what she was allowed or not allowed to eat. And um, I have sort of changed my eating style right now because I felt that I was eating things that were on this list of you can have this, but you can't have this. And the things that I would end up binging on were always the things I couldn't have. And it was just this bad cycle of I was essentially depriving myself of something and then um, I would break my diet for whatever reason and then I would binge on the things I wasn't supposed to eat and then I would go through this deprivation cycle again. So um, it's, it, it's hard, but when you're eating what you want, when you're hungry, <laughs> That's the key when you're hungry. Um, you're a lot more satisfied and less likely to continue with this cycle. So a lot of times um, when we're eating this way, we're wanting a release from situations. So your question five on your sheet says, have you ever broken your diet because you wanted a release from the situations in life? What were those situations and what did you actually want more than the food? Um, and so like, I'll give you a, I've, I've written a couple of things down. So like I said, um, with my daughter, we are at the stage where she's able to make up her own mind and she can choose to do what she's been told to do, or she can choose to not do what she's been told to do. And so she has just been super challenging. She has been super exhausting to me where it's that we're constantly, training and teaching and and correcting and it's just like this this constant battle right now with her and so it is very stressful it's very mentally draining um emotionally it's super draining and um i'm i find that i'm wanting to eat food um to deal with this situation and i know that the food is not going to change her fussing it's not going to change her attitude it's not going to change my attitude, that's for sure. But what I want is I want to enjoy motherhood. Like that's the, that is the basis of it is I want to enjoy motherhood. Um, I want her to have fun and I want to love what we're doing together. And so food is not going to fix that, right? Um, so it's good to look at maybe some situations you're currently having in your life and realizing that there's not an actual food like peanut M&Ms are not going to quit her fussing and are not going to make me enjoy motherhood more. <laughs> you know, so it's good to kind of dig into this, to have that rationale that says this is part of life and I need to learn how to deal with it in the moment and not go to food. She's talking about dropping the struggle of this constant battle of um, fighting between I'm allowed to have this, I'm not allowed to have that, okay? So this is where this is coming from. It says, not only the freedom to choose what to eat, but the freedom to have the body that performs fluidly and the freedom to like that body as well as the self who inhabits it. And this is something that I am finding very uh, life-changing and very important to my journey towards food freedom and breaking the cycle of emotional eating, compulsive eating, is realizing that I have the ability to choose whatever I wanna eat. I can eat peanut M&Ms. I can eat all the peanut M&Ms. But what is my body gonna feel like after I eat all the peanut M&Ms? It's gonna feel lethargic. It's gonna feel sluggish. I'm not gonna like the person who inhabits it. I'm going to feel defeated. I'm going to feel like there is something completely wrong with me that I can't get this together. I mean, you guys know exactly what you're gonna feel when you eat that way, okay? Or I can choose to eat a more balanced diet, a, a healthier meal, and I'm gonna feel light, and I'm gonna feel energetic afterwards, and I'm gonna be productive, and I'm going to get things that I need to get accomplished, and I'm going to be able to um, have energy to do the next thing. I'm not going to completely exhaust my body through food. And that ability, that's freedom. That is freedom right there. And so 
I've actually been able to do this a couple times here recently where I wanted to eat something else and I thought, okay, if I eat this, this is how I'm gonna feel. Am I okay with that? And if I'm okay with that, then go ahead and eat it. Or if I eat this option, I'm gonna feel this way. Is that how I wanna feel? And I actually let that be my basis for food and not, I can't have this, I can't have this. And it was liberating and it was incredible. And if you haven't done it, you must experience this. <laughs> okay, so on our second page of um, our worksheet, you have a chart that we're gonna be working through and some, some tips she has. So this is, um, so you've determined you're hungry, now what? Now what do you do? How do you choose what you wanna eat? And so she gives you a couple of ideas and things here. So one is, what taste are you wanting? Do you want sweet? Sour, salty, spicy, or just bland? Um, what texture do you want? Smooth, crunchy, creamy? What kind of texture do you want in your mouth? Temperature, do you want it hot? Do you want it room temperature? Do you want it cold? Um, second point she gives is to stay in the present moment with yourself. So she writes here on page 27, when you eat what you thought you wanted yesterday, it doesn't satisfy you today you'll go looking for more food. So just because it was something you wanted yesterday doesn't necessarily you're gonna mean you're gonna want it today. So make sure that you're staying with yourself when you're asking yourself, what do I want? And you're not detaching and saying, well, I ate this yesterday, so I'm gonna wanna eat it today. Cause it might not be, it might be, and that's okay. But make sure that you are listening to your wants and what you're feeling like you want. Because again, if you're eating something that's not actually satisfying what you're actually wanting, you're gonna keep going. You're gonna keep looking until you find that satisfaction. All right, so her tip number three is, what if you've started a meal and you realize you don't want it? Or it's not what you wanted. It's not what your body wanted, okay? And she actually gives some really amazing tips that I had never, some of them I've never thought of before. Um, and that is on page 27 through 30. Oh, so she gives some examples of, you know, like, don't, don't worry about it. Like say you've made this meal and you really decide you don't want it. Um, what do you do about that? And there's many times I think as a mom, uh, if you are the provider, the cooker of, of meals, I have done this where I've cooked this great meal for everyone. And I sit down and I'm like, I don't actually want this. Like I would rather have yogurt, fruit, and granola than what I just cooked, but I'm going to eat what I just cooked because I just cooked it. So she kind of gives you some points on, on that kind of a situation, but I wanted to read this first. Um, I wanted to read this first. She says on page 28, we eat to satisfy emotional as well as physical needs. And unless both are acknowledged and dealt with, we are setting ourselves up to feel deprived and then we go hunting for more food. So I thought that was kind of interesting because we always say, oh, it's so bad that you eat emotionally. Um, you only need to pay attention to your physical needs. But the truth is we are emotional beings. We were created emotional beings. And so therefore her, her statement here where it says we need to at least acknowledge the emotional and the physical, and we need to somewhat deal with the emotional and the physical, um, you're not gonna really feel that satisfaction. So I thought that was an extremely deep and good point. Um, so she also talks about, we're back to, what if you started a meal and you realize it's not what you want? Um, she talks about like if you're alone or if you're with people at a restaurant, um, what you can do. Um, okay, so then the last part of this chapter is dealing with um, what she calls hummers, foods that are hummers that hum to you and foods that are beckoners. Now she did not create this um, label, this title. This was actually created by um, somebody else uh, the psychologist eat anything diet by Lillian and, um, Leonard Pearson is who, um, coined these phrases. So a Hummer is a food that, you know, you want, um, before you see it. So it's something that says, um, you can imagine the texture, the taste, the temperature. Um, it's a food that you really want. And if you don't eat this humming food, that's when you're gonna go looking for more foods, okay? And um, it might actually take you a while to figure out what foods actually hum to you, especially if you're 
diet has been very high in things that are not necessarily necessary for our bodies physically. So if you're eating a diet that's super high in fat, um, carbs and sugar, it's going to take you a while to really understand what a humming food is. Um, and an example of this was like I told you the other day, I had this doctor's appointment. I had this great plan of, of eating these wonderful pancakes I was going to make. Um, and I was really trying to think, what did I want to eat? What was I wanting? And the banana, apple, and peanut butter, those were humming to me. I really wanted them. I could like imagine how good it was going to taste. So that's like one of my favorite things, like snacks, meals to eat. So there's that. Now a beckoner, a beckoner is what it sounds like. It is something that's calling you, calling to you, even though you did not want that food before the commercial came on, before somebody talked about it, before you saw it at the grocery store, um, before you walked by a bakery and you smelled bread and pastries, this is a food that you had no intention of eating until it beckoned you. Um, now, they're more, these foods are generally very convenient. So, um, prepackaged things are beckoners a lot of times and something, so one of the things when I first came home before I ate the banana and apple and peanut butter is I had opened the pantry and my husband and my daughter really like these peanut butter crackers. There's like six of them in a package. Um, and they're very convenient. They're very fast. Um, they do have the peanut butter, uh, but it's a beckoner food because it's like I can grab it, rip it open and eat it. Whereas the banana and the apple, I have to actually get open up, cut. I have to, you know, spoon out the peanut butter, you know, so there's a little bit more work involved. So on your second sheet, I've given you a chart where I want you to write the thing that you ate, the item that you ate, whether on a scale of one to 10, whether it hummed to you or um, if it was a beckoner and again, the scale is written there one to 10 and, uh, go for that. Okay. So there's no judgment in what you are eating. This is exploration. This is learning about yourself and you are going to see and see if there are foods that really you're eating because they're really what you want, <laughs> what your body wants, or are you eating things because they're convenient? She talks about just taking your time with this process because if you've never really done this and you've just kind of grabbed things based on um, availability, on how many calories they are, you may not really know what you want to eat. So give yourself time, you know, if even if it's just like one meal at a time, one snack at a time, to really let your body pick what it wants. And I've been doing this and this, this concept has really been life-changing for me. Um, she writes here on page 34, it says, if you don't know what you want to eat, you're either letting yourself get so hungry, you'll eat anything or you're not hungry enough. And this is a true point because sometimes if you're not really sure what you want to eat, it, you know, like sometimes you, you're like bored. Okay. And you keep going to the kitchen. Like you keep opening the fridge thinking that the answer is going to be in there of, of what's going to make you not bored. Um, you, you know, or you're going back and forth to the pantry. You're not getting anything out of the pantry, but you're like, you're, you're looking. So maybe you're not really hungry or, um, and it was, and this, I felt after my fasting, maybe you've let yourself get so hungry. You don't even know what you want to eat. And I had felt that way after fasting because I was like, I'd give myself all these really good options. And I was like, no, no, that doesn't sound like I want it. I don't really want to eat that. I'd even debated just getting a cup of coffee and going to get my daughter, you know? So that's a really good point to remember that if you can't really decide what you want, either you're not hungry or you let yourself get too hungry. That is the end of our chapter two. Um, I feel like this chapter again was so powerful. If you let these truths in, implement your life, they can be very life changing. It's going to take practice, but give it a shot. So have a wonderful day, make wonderful choices, and I will see you guys for chapter three.